Hello, my name is Dr. Matthew Rogalski. I'm the medical director for the Wound Institute of Ocean County, New Jersey, in Toms River, New Jersey, and I'm a senior partner at Ocean County Foot and Ankle Surgical Associates. I've been in practice now 23 years, confining my practice to predominantly wound healing and limb salvage. And I want to discuss to you today a critical feature in the wound healing paradigm, which is exudate management. I created a paradigm called prepare to repair. And that is important because there's multiple things that conspire to create the wound. There's multiple things that have to conspire to heal the wound. We just don't look at the hole in the patient. Exudate management is critical in the wound healing process. The fluid that comes out of these wounds, especially when they're in a dependent position, when they're walking around or they're sitting all day with their legs down, is incredibly filled with multitude of inflammatory mediators and a tremendous amount of biofilm. But it's incredibly important for the wound healing process that we move that fluid out, away from the wound bed, off of the tissue. Because if it sits on the wound, it's gonna break down the tissue, makes a macerated red odor, and then the patient starts to freak out about it, thinking that they have some type of massive infection. Because we didn't do a good process or a good problem in managing the the, the chronic exudate that comes from the wound. So we're talking about Zalta today. And listen, I treat 10,000 chronic wounds a year. It is the best thing that I have seen um, to manage exudate, and that's no bias. I've used every single product that you could think of. I've done 21 RCTs in the wound healing arena. And I'm gonna show you different ways that you can apply this because of its capabilities, because of the pleiotrophic action of the different types of materials that are contained in it, make it the best for exudate management. So if we take, for instance, this kind of leg that you see here, and unfortunately we're seeing this more regularly and regularly. When we look at venous ulcer wounds that patients have, you realize that over 6% of the world's population, over 65, has a venous leg ulceration. 93% are open longer than a year, 7% are open longer than five years. There are about four million days of, of work that are missed every year by people with venous leg ulcerations is a 30% all-cause mortality as well. But for superior exudate management works to allow your wound to move out of inflammation into the proliferative phase, there is nothing better than salt. And I can say that without any reservations. So when you look at the, the two types that we're gonna be talking about today, we have the max and we have the super. Now, both of these can absorb nine times its weight in drainage. It doesn't fall apart, it doesn't tear, it doesn't disintegrate. This is your max at 340 grams, and this is our, our uh, super at 600 grams. You can see how beautiful and elegant that that looks. So you can see the capabilities of these fibers. And even a better thing for, about this dressing is that it, it wicks and it sucks into the exudate and it dissipates it throughout this entire surface. Um, the saturation is, is incredible, how it can wick the fluid off take it into the dressing and lock it away. It will not come back into the wound. We call that this hydrocapillary action that it has because of the viscose material that is contained within it. These specialized fibers have two openings on each part of the fiber so it can wick and suck into that uh, fiber all of that inflammatory destructive exudates that are being pushed out from this chronic wound. Let's take a look at when we're looking at this venous leg ulceration, you can see the hemosiderosis, the inverted champagne bottle appearance of the leg indicative of venous disease and lymphedema that these patients have. Chronic inflammatory conditions, the stasis dermatitis that these patients have, the hemosiderosis and the levodermatosclerosis. So if we take a look at this ankle ulcer in the gator area of the leg, where most of these patients are going to have this pathology. So you do your good debridement. And I don't think that we do enough debridement. So I caution you to make sure you're getting an arterial Doppler as well as a venous reflux study. Those two things you have to get done as part of the prepare to repair paradigm. So we debride, we do some kind of antibiofilm strategy. We use a lot of different collagens in wounds as well. Collagen is going to be critical in the treatment of chronic wound from day one. So exerting its effects as an anti-inflammatory and as a scaffolding to encourage cell and growth for dermal and epithelial re-epithelialization. So let's pretend that we did that. We did our antibiofilm strategy. We put our collagen into the wound. And now we need something over the top to absorb incredibly destructive exudate. I take my Zolta. This is, the, this is what we call the, the super. 
Um, again, you can use the max as well. So when we're looking at this, right, as I told you that it, you can crumple this up and move it and it fits beautifully. I didn't have to cut it. I didn't have to um, put things on it to put it in place. It's as simple as easy. And again, with the polyester surface covering that we have, it is a non-stick surface. So you talk about removing wound pain, you talk about ease of dressing change because of that non-stick area. When people start to walk, the bandage could piston onto that. This will stay in place because of the pliability and the conforming capability that Zalta does. And then it's important too, that we need to secure that in place. Now we use a lot of soft roll. I'm just demonstrating how we're just, just a little bit here, just to wrap this on, just a little bit. This is just rudimentary to show you how well that it stays into place. But after we do that and we secure it, then we should definitely be talking about multi-layer compression bandaging, milking this edematous fluid, this highly inflammatory fluid, this caustic fluid out of this limb. What if we had somebody that was really exudative and somebody that we couldn't bring back in two to three days and we had to go a week? When I take this off, this is the super. I mean, I love using this type of thing because you get so much stuff in, so much of the product in that. And it's very, again, simple to use. Now see how nice and easy that this does cut. So I'm gonna cut this piece like this. We have one of these that are gonna fit. You always have to overlap the wound. Lots of times I'll put two and I just slightly overlap that because the incredible hydrocapillary action, the wicking of this, the dispersal of that fluid from the wound bed into the first dressing, into the second one. It's almost like it's magnetic for itself, that because of the incredible sucking power of these fibers, it can wick from one bandage into the next. And then I will take my longer piece, again, right? See the pliability, the coolness of it, how it moves. And then I add that over the top. And then we will take our wrapping. That's one of the great things about, about Zolta. It gives you that comfortability, that peace of mind as a physician, to know that once I put this on the wound, the exudative power absorbing nine times its weight and drainage removes that inflammatory fluid, that nidus for infection. And then of course, your multi-layer compression bandaging, safety, conformability, ease of use. Another key interesting factor with Zolta is because of the, it has a positive charge to these fibers and bacterial membranes are negatively charged. We call that a cationic charging, that bacteria can stick into this wound like a magnet pulls it in, sucks it into this tissue, locks it away. It can't get back out. It can't get to the fluid that it needs to survive. So that's another factor in reducing biofilm inflammation that could lead to chronic inflammation. So you have hydrocapillary action, you have cationic charging of the bandage and superior wicking of this fluid to take that off of the wound. And no matter what the pathology of the underlying generation of the chronic wound, Zalta will remove that inflammatory nidus. It removes the biofilm contamination into the wound. It rebalances the metabolism that is going on in the wound to make it into a more proliferative phenotype, both cellular and through the extracellular matrix. It's the same type of deal. If we have a bad wound over the Achilles or for the heel, we can do the same thing, right? We can take our initial piece, which is slightly larger than the wound. And another thing I wanna point out is this beautiful thickness that we have of, of the Zolta is this, it gives it good cushioning. I know a lot of people will use foams. Well, the foam has minimal absorptive capacity, minimal. Well, why not use something that has superior wicking capability, nine times its weight in drainage, without falling apart, without disintegrating. And we can also use this as a very, very good padding material over these high pressure areas. You see how that conforms? I don't have to cut it, I don't have to displace it somehow. I don't have to cut multiple, multiple pieces to fit around the curvature of the heel. This simply moves right into place. And we can take our ABD pads as we lay that right over. And then we can wrap right over that too. So always some nice soft roll over the top of that, keeping your foot at a right angle to the leg and then continue on with your compression bandaging. Any of our leg wounds, again, Right, we put a piece. I like to keep it longer and wider than the wound on the initial, okay? So we overlap the skin, so we get that wicking off the skin. And then another piece 
over the top. That's where I think the rolls have some great application. So we covered venous ones, we covered lymphedema ones, we covered surgical, radio, whatever it has to be on the leg, utilizing Azalta for those instances. This is called the super, and as you can see how I've cut it and I've trimmed it again, there's no mop ends, it doesn't, it doesn't flop out, very tight, consistency to it, lends to its capabilities of superior absorption and dispersing of chronic inflammatory fluid. Now, diabetic ulcers, again, are all about pressure, right? These people have neuropathy, they have a biomechanical deformity. Repetitive pressure leads to the callus formation. So it is important that we are going to have, again, proper pressure offloading. We don't look at the hole in the patient. We need to look at the whole patient. We debride, you see all that callus there. We have to debride that away. We do things for our antibiofilm strategy, taking your collagen, putting your collagen in. Now I know powder's a little bit hard to get in there. there so there are sheets and that you can put in there. And a the great thing about the sheet too is you can tear it, you can break it, you can pack that into the area. In these instances, I think that I like to do it that way is I will kind of cut it almost like two an oval. Again, see how nice and easy this works to cut, right? And if you're concerned about, I don't know, I've had some people say, are these corners cut? I mean, come on, it's Zolta. It's soft, it's conforming, the ease of use. I mean, if you feel better and you want to do a little trimming of it, just to maybe map the contour of it, make it into this oval so that it fits a little bit better into that area. Now, with the piece that I just used, I will remove this area here. We keep all these little pieces because this stuff is so valuable to utilize. We put our piece of Zolta there, and then we can lay this over the top. Again, doing two functions, absorbing, wicking away that nasty exudative fluid full of biofilm, full of pathogens that are in there. And at the same time, we're adding pressure offloading. The beautiful padding, the cushioning that the Zolta does get. And again, when it absorbs that fluid, you don't have to worry about it becoming saturated that it drips back out into the wound. And then we can simply put our ABD pads and we put more ABD pads, we cover all these bony areas and then we wrap. And then we go to put the total contact cast on there. But you can see the Zolta is not flipping it open. It's not so rigid that it's expanding your dressing. I mean, this is very little compression and it's holding right into that area. Again, because of the materials that it's made of, lends itself to the conformability, the pliability, and the ease of use. So halogen or phalangeal joint ulcers are another very significant area that we do see those. And again, it's another beautiful area where the, the pliability, the conformability of the Zolta will help. So we do our debridement, we do our antibiotic film strategies, we put collagen into the wound, and then it's another good area. See how that nice conforms and moves to the architecture of that patient's foot. Then I do like to take another piece of it and it acts almost like a strut, okay? So we can put that right on there. So you think about that pressure offloading, the superior wicking capability, moving the biofilm, moving the inflammatory exit out, and we'll be able to put our dressings, put our ABDs on it, web roll between the toes so that we can absorb the exudate, and then we continue to wrap, move the fluid out, the edema control, and then into your total contact cast. Not only in its dimension capabilities for the absorption, but also it aids in pressure offloading for these wounds, reducing the friction and shear, and again, with the polyester surface that it won't stick to the wound and cause significant pain when you take the dressing off. So let's say we had a DFU here. Now you gotta trim the nail down. I mean, look at this is our typical patient, right? So you make sure you trim the nail down too, at the same time. You do your debridement, you do all that good stuff that you have been taught to do. So I cut a piece, I cut a piece of that, right? I cut the whole length. And then what I do is I just fold it in half, I'm gonna cut this. Because now I have the capability, see how nice this slides in between the toes? So I'm slinging the toe because I wanna keep the toe pushed up. Then I take my second piece of Zolta and I start here at the bottom and I bring that up over the top. Now, I have complete control of that wound. I'm offloading it a little bit with the Zolta too and I have pushed up the toe to straighten it out. So we talked about treating toe wounds, we talked about treating metatarsal wounds, we talked about treating wounds, of course, on these bunion prominences, and we talked about treating our venous leg ulcer patients. I think it's important, again, for us to understand that there's not one thing that's going to fix this whole problem. Multiple things have conspired to create the wound, 
multiple things have to conspire to heal the wound. Diabetes is the greatest existential threat to health. It's the chronic, it's the costliest chronic disease process in the history of mankind. So we need to know how to treat it. In that, my prepare to repair paradigm, exudate management is paramount because you're not going to be able to see these patients every day. You're only going to maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, you can get them back. So knowing that you have a, a, a dressing like this, that you have the comfortability, you have the ease of mind to know that this stuff can pull this nasty crap out of this wound, preventing infection, manage the exudate, getting rid of odors, maceration, help moving the wound out of inflammation into the proliferative phase. So again, thank you for your time today and listening in this. If you ever want to have questions, if you want to talk about stuff, please feel free to email me. Have a blessed day.